Marcus Roval, number four. How are you feeling ahead of this one? Uh, I am feeling really excited because I love race time. It's one of those times when we get to kind of see the fruits of our labor come together. Uh, my whole team is really, um, they're, they're just pumped up about the week ahead and what we have to do when we uh, just kind of enjoy hosting an event, enjoy uh, having people come from all over the world to see the, the events we put on. And in the May race, we saw all those fans back in the stands. I'm sure you guys are excited to do that same thing again for the fall race. Yes, we love it. We're back to full capacity, not having the restrictions. Uh, our team is excited about that, and I know all of our guests are as well. Uh, of course, we all sort of have this nice sigh of relief when we can get outside enjoy some friends and family and just time to hang out and have fun. Take me back to where you were, you know, in your mindset before the first Roval race that day, because you're taking <laughs> something and you're changing it in a sport that yes. maybe sometimes is resistant to that. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, there, there was some stress, you know, there definitely was some stress. There was this um, excitement and uh, some anxiety and all of the sort of the weight of, of pulling off an event that people think you, can't be done. And uh, so really probably the most relieving time was when I saw the full field of cars head into turn one of the Roval and they made it through into the infield road course portion without a wreck. And I thought, all right, that's a big plus right there. How about <laughs> the end? Because you got a memorable one at the end oh, of that race goodness. with Ryan Blaney sneaking through past the, the oh, yeah. right there. Oh yeah, Jimmy Johnson going for a last chance pass right at the end and Blaney ends up winning the first Bank of America Robo 400. It was pretty much a storybook finish and um, couldn't have scripted it better myself. <laughs> Speaking of the scripting and the layout, the backstretch chicane, the idea for that came from somebody pretty famous, maybe not in a cup car, but a really, really well-known driver. Yes, uh, Mario Andretti. Wow. He was uh, so generous with his time to come out and talk to us about the Roval. Um, took a, a, a few laps around in a brand new Porsche 918, super uh, amazing uh, uh, supercar, and uh, gave my brother a few laps actually. And uh, but Mario came back and he said, "You need a chicane on the back stretch." And he's such a professional. He said, "If I if I like the track." I'll tell everybody. Mm -hmm. If I don't like it, if I see problems, I'll just tell you, which was, <laughs> was a nice comfort for me before yeah. everything started. But he said, you need a chicane on the back stretch. And I said, well, Mario, just can't you just slow down if you need to slow down? And he said, no, drivers, drivers won't slow down. It's, it, it's too much. You got you to gotta slow it down a little bit, um, take care of the tires and the car. And so it turns out um, Mario is absolutely right, probably not the first time for a, a legend like him. And uh, he really uh, helped us to, to shape the character of the track and it provides for a fantastic passing opportunity and it sets up the last lap pass uh, like La Ryan Bellini had for that first year. All right, so this race comes about four or five years ago. Now we're seeing other changes at some of your tracks and tracks around NASCAR that are different than the norm, mm -hmm. but it all seemed to stem from this race. Do you think this was kind of a catalyst for all of that? You know, I think NASCAR is built on wild and crazy ideas. Um, you know, to to have cars, you know, originally on the beach in Daytona and race on the beach in a two and a half mile track for 500 miles yeah. is, is kind of a crazy idea. And then the risks of building Charlotte Motor Speedway in 1959 and all the risks on top of that, lights at the track um, that we originally had for the NASCAR All-Star Race. I think the Roval is, not the the first risky idea it's just one of the newer risky ideas and it did serve as a catalyst to kind of get us back into a mode of of changing and trying new things taking nascar to austin at the circuit of the americas uh, putting dirt at bristol motor speedway on our, our high bank half mile up there earlier this year uh, big risk like that big changes uh, to just uh, add some new interest and excitement into the sport of NASCAR. Yeah, perhaps no athletes in any other sport or league are as vocal about whether they like something or don't like something as NASCAR <laughs> yes. drivers. I mean, in your role, how much of that do you take into account when you're looking at trying to do different things? You know, I certainly think about it a lot. It, it's, a, it's a bit like um, I've heard um, golfers talk about the, the, the setup of a yeah. golf course for a major event. Um, I know when 
um, when I'm at Quail and, and I am at that event, I know that uh, Johnny Harris and everybody at Quail Hollow wants the course to be in perfect condition. And, uh, and the players have you know, their thoughts about the way the course plays. NASCAR and golf actually go together really well in that regard mm -hmm. because the, the players are on this tour of the schedule and they have their thoughts about every course that they're playing in golf and every course they're driving in NASCAR. And uh, so for us as promoters and uh, speedway builders, we think a lot about the details of what makes a great race course. And some of the action we've talked about that's happened just in four years or three years plus this week of the Roval. I mean, it's certainly worthy of a playoff race. We love that it's an elimination race on WCNC oh, yeah. Charlotte. Do you think it'll stay that way going forward? You know, for uh, for right now, I think it's uh, it's a perfect position. NASCAR likes it. We like it. Um, it it provides for a lot of drama, and you know that's we're. We're in the sports business and the entertainment business. Um, when you're in the sports business, no matter what sport you're in, you don't really like to think about it as, as entertainment. But for us as fans, we all love those edge of your seat moments in sports, and that, that is entertainment. That's kind of the quintessential um, you know, thrill of victory and agony of defeat moment that keeps us watching sports. And the Roval race in NASCAR is part of that, that suspension of uh, in anticipation of what's going to happen next because you're not sure with this many turns and this many opportunities for a driver to outbreak another one or out accelerate another one it certainly provides uh, that anxious opportunity for uh, for thrilling moments to happen. It was a great vision and, and as you envision racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway in five, ten years. I'm sure that next crazy idea is out there. What, what, what do you think it might look like in 10, 15 years? N not specifically with the Roval, but just racing in general yeah. at America's Home for Racing. Yeah, you know, I think the big ideas, big opportunities are, are kind of a specialty at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We always want to do something that's bigger and better. We have this kind of um, discontent, but it's also constructive discontent. Mm -hmm about the way that we are and the way we have been and we always want to try to outdo ourselves uh, so who knows we uh, will we'll have big ideas coming in the future I think um, the the way we race is is still the core of um, you know a car going faster than another car um, I think Henry Ford may be the one that said mm -hmm. that uh, the first race happened when the second car was built right so no matter what form of racing you have, whether it's electric or uh, gasoline powered or you know, on four wheels or two wheels or who knows what, racing is just kind of in our blood, I think. And uh, we like to watch the competition on the track. Well, as you watch this Saturday and Sunday, I hope your nerves are a little bit less than four years ago because you guys <laughs> have certainly put together a good one. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, thank you, Nick.